listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor, and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Brigarelia? What are See you doing? Ya. Fueling up on the yeah, old yeah, uh, yeah. cup Got of a little, Joe. Little Marley coffee going. Um, what's going on with the beardsy? You trimmed <laughs> some of it, but you left the trimmed one it up part. For you. The one it looked like a billy goat. It's like <laughs> a, little, a little longer, a little longer <laughs> here. A little fade, Nasty. Is that what it is? Oh, I think so. A little fade. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Did you go to Tuna's guy? No, I didn't, that's the guy you got to go to. Barber, to, yeah. to, to, that's, to a, that's a tight up. fade. Well, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I have what it takes to go. That I think tight. you do. I yeah, think, you I think got so. It. I think, yeah, that's I think real, you do. Real tight. You, you got the oh, little stubs I going in. Sh- I know. I I realized that as you just said. Didn't that. Even I forgot know you could to grow shave. A stubs. It's all gray. Boys. <laughs> well, let her buck. Nah, only I forty-five. So <laughs> good point. Um, what do you like? What's going on? Trying to stay cool in these. Hot summer days. Hot summer days. <laughs> nice. Doing a few nicely camps. cooled. Doing a few a camps. A couple camps. Yeah, I was yep. uh, visiting our good friend uh, Vince Williams yesterday at the Igloo. Oh, Willie. A little sesh, on ice session, and then yep. a little little mindfulness session after, a little drumming nest. You did the drums. Did, did the you drums. take the uh, snare, or did you use the <laughs> no Zimbabwe? No, it was the djembe. Oh, the djembe, my yeah. bad. The djembe. Zimbabwe. That's, <laughs> that's close. That's a country That's the closest I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Zimbabwe, how did your, how did your, the, uh, what's oh, the, the javelin, javelin throw, throw go? Did he, did he win? Took it, took it home. <laughs> His javelin, he took it and went home. He, he's like, no, I'm not All playing. the way. No, he uh, went the distance. Yeah. One gold. No, I haven't actually checked in, so I have no clue <laughs> if I pick. <laughs> I picked it anything at all there, but yeah, you, you. I think I think you're gonna win that one if it hasn't already happened. Oh yeah, I took I took pretty much a lock. Damn straight! I can't believe how much I can't believe how much research you did on this gentleman. Oh, you know my passion for javelin. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> I think everyone that knows you knows your passion for that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Javelin throw is on August 6th at 4.20 a.m. Oh, here we that go. Yeah, yeah, I you circled on my calendar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to be wait, uh, waiting for that with bated breath. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> You're going to be so excited. <laughs> This guy's on. Can't real. wait. It's been Rick says he's gonna win. <laughs> Tons of research. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Didn't do my homework. I know. I, I, Breaking down video. You, you were telling me that guy's training schedule is insane. Oh, that's almost. insane. The analytics of this guy. Yeah, we should see it broken down in real time. <laughs> the, the elbow <laughs> extension is key with him. He wouldn't believe it. Yeah, no, you really wouldn't. The hip torque. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hip torque. Got to get your hips into a place. Got to. You have to do it. Hey. <laughs> Away from the javelin throw, which is pretty <laughs> exciting. Um, let's oh. talk a little bit about our boy Travis Connecting. TK. Oh yeah, um, signing an eight-year deal. Riggs bringing him eight point seven five. A bad per year. Purse. Seventy sheets in the <sighs> bank. Wow. Initial thoughts on the deal, the term. You okay with everything there? I think so. I mean, you got to lock the guy down. Yeah. Um, the money seems to be right where it's supposed to be. I think maybe the only argument would have been the uh, the, the no trade clause for six years. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that next. Which I mean, yeah. I don't have a problem with. I mean, to me, you know, if we talk about the, we talked about this thing last week or the week before. Like this guy's a flyer. You, you lock this guy up. He's a spirited guy, hungry guy. He competes, shows up. Um, to me, it's not a big deal. If, if for some reason he phased that for two or three years. He would know that, and he would probably want right. out as well. I, I, to me, yeah. it's the balls. The way I see it is in the player's court, and if that's like the variable that gets the the, the deal done, that like you got to give it to him. I don't yeah. see it a big deal, but I what mean, are you th- what are your thoughts on that? To, to me, well, I, I I like the deal. 
I don't even mind the eight years. I I get where people are worried about the six the six year of no trade, but TK's not that old either. Right. So I don't think he's going to be done in six years. Or you hope not anyway, right? Mm-hmm. He does play like he's a six foot two power right. forward, even though he's not. Um, you worry about. Well, I say you worry about the way he plays, but that's how you want him to play. That's yeah. what makes TK TK. That's right. Um, he's a he's a dog out there. He is, and you know he put up uh, close to seventy points. I think he had sixty eight this year. Um, I have no problems with it. If you if you don't sign him, that's just to me that's a bad look. Uh, you're rebuilding. Uh, he's not thirty, and you gave him an eight year deal. Right, yeah. like I think it's a move they had to do, and I think there's plenty of teams that may have even given him more. Probably, um, I see. I saw a lot of uh, people kind of like <clears throat> comparing him to, like, say Reinhardt, who mm-hmm. got a similar deal, and uh, Gensel. He just to me, he's a different player than different. those guys, right? Like, um, so everything that to me that TK brings to the team is there's a lot of things that are that make this worth. I mean, I think his points alone, it's where you're at now yep. these days with the cap. And what you hope is the cap keeps going up. And, you know, in four or five years, this team's maybe even before that a real contender. And um, I think he'll be a big part of that. And he's one of your captains. I, I, I really like the deal. I don't have a huge problem with it. And like you said, the six year, no trade, that could always change. Yeah. Player could, you know, say, I mean, they kind of have you by the, by the balls. Yeah. And, you know, but, uh, Knowing TK, and I know, obviously, you know him, he'll put that pressure on himself. He wants to perform, and mm-hmm. he always has it's yeah. since the first day he walked in the locker room when he was 19. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The points aside, he, he brings the energy. You know, he's got that, I say that, that X factor, you know, he, he, yeah. he brings that spirit. He is a flyer. Um, so for all those reasons, points included, obviously, you got you got to produce. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good deal. It's yeah. necessary. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, happy to see him back. Obviously. Yeah, me too. I, I didn't see him going anywhere. Uh, yeah, but. I was hoping. Not. I know it took. I think these negotiations were a little harder than, and and took a little bit longer uh, than some people thought. But I, I think from what I was hearing was that the six year no movement was part of that. That was, was the kinda, friction. Yeah, yeah that was t- taking so long. But I think everybody's happy with the number. I mean, got him in there because everyone was saying ten for eight years. You know. I'm not sure. I love TK, but ten that's a high yeah. ticket to pay, you know, to pay. But anyway, I'm happy with it. Yeah, no, and, it's, uh, it's great to have a guy healthy, like that. I don't think anyone's gonna bat an eye at it. I agree. Yeah, he he brings it. So, um, you know, one step closer to yeah. where the Flyers want to be. What did you guys think of Sanheim breaking the news? <laughs> I love insider. That. This guy's an insider. Yeah, Sandy. I wonder how that went down. Does he well, hit him up and say, "Hey, I'm going to post hey, I this. Know make sure before, this thing's public." Make or? Sure, yeah, I, I don't know. These two are inseparable. I don't yeah. know how they're they're living right now, not being together. But uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was uh, funny. baller that that Sandy did that. I thought that was pretty that was pretty funny. Um, but they're best buds, yeah. so you know they're they're both locked in, and um, they're definitely happy. Like and hopefully, Sandy steps married. up his game another level. Another this year, level, yeah, exactly. Because TK is back in the action. Yep. Raise his game up a little bit more. Exactly. Got a little more in the tank, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure he does. Um, moving on, a lot of talk um, last week or so with um, our goalie prospect with the Flyers, Kolosov. Um, Baller, Baller's got an insight. <laughs> um, basically, what was going down is it, it, they were saying at the end of the year, you know, he obviously was in Lehigh, that he was treated poorly, uh, abandoned, um, and that he didn't want to return. Uh, there were some reports that maybe he was a little pissed off Fedotov getting a deal right away, not spending any time in the minors, all that. Who, we don't know that for sure. That's speculation, right. obviously. Um, Flyers are saying that he is coming to camp, and then you have people on the other side saying he's not. Um, what were your thoughts on that? First of all, I do want to say the Flyers don't ab- – don't treat anyone poorly, especially now yeah. with the, the regime that's in now. But and they never have, yeah. Anyway, but uh, I don't. I think the last thing, especially with Ian Perrier being a head coach down there, the last thing they were trying to do was mistreat a guy. It would never happen no. under his watch or the fly or Danny B's or Jonesy or anyone Dan Helferty as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
obviously a unique situation coming from Russia later in the season and you're 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 finding yourself in a, in a new team in a new situation language barrier you're at the hotel obviously things aren't ideal I mean I don't really know what went on so I, I think what it seems like now is that he slots himself at number three and maybe he don't want to come back overseas and, and, and play in the minor leagues. I mean, I, who right. knows? Now he's just pinning his, his frustrations on the back end of the season. I mean, I, I don't know what, what, to, what to think about it all. Um, those situations are always tough. Anytime you go to a new team, any time of the season. I mean, I remember, yeah. you know, coming to Philly and I'm living at the hotel, you know, the, the Hampton Inn at the time. And, you know, yeah. like you, don't, you don't even have a car. You, you know, didn't you even get, have the L.A. Mall then. They didn't have the L.A. Mall. No, that, was, <laughs> no, that was in the works. It it was was in I, I had to earn that. It was soon after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so these, these these situations are, are challenging. And obviously there was no other Russian players and the, the right. language barrier. There's probably other, you know, frustrations around uh, this, the, this situation itself uh, other than, than, than minutes played as well, too. Right. So... I think it's a combination of just like looking at your situation and and seeing where you fit in it and maybe not being happy with it right. and making your choices around that. Other than that, I, I really can't say what, what went on because, like you said, there's no way in hell that they just like bring this guy over right. and just abandon him. Yeah, that's And, and that's just like let him, happening. you know, like, let, let, him, let him just drift away. There's no way that to happen. So um, I think it's just uh, probably a mixture of foreign territory yeah being at a hotel after practice not a lot of whole you know a whole lot going on you're not in a you're not in philadelphia you're in lehigh and nothing against lehigh but there's not a whole lot going on that's and it. we know that um I, but to your to your point i just i agree with you i don't think the flyers would ever just i'm sure they were constantly checking on do you need anything there's a language barrier too yeah uh, the one side of it i'm looking at is like you're a you're a pro player. You already played pro over there. You you have to realize coming over here, you are going to a place where you don't understand the language That's yet. Right. Um, it's not going to be that easy to do. Obviously, it would have been easier if there's another Russian on the team. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but if he does come back to camp, you gotta, he's coming to camp. He does have uh, Fedotov here. He's got Z, Big Zamula. Yep. Um, so there are some guys here. But... Like you said, maybe he doesn't want to play. Maybe he thinks he's penciled in for the minors. But if he's this good and has that big a shot, like I feel like the ages should be like, it's okay to start in the American League and be the guy. Well, totally. I uh, mean, yeah. And, and building off that, like that healthy competition, like you, you, you'd be foolish to think that you're going to go in any organization and they're just going to roll at the red carpet, like right. give you a, give you a spot yeah. at the main club. You have to earn it. You have to earn it, and they're all, and every year teams are always trying to get better. They're always signing new guys right. and trying to, you know, find another piece of the puzzle. Uh, so I, I couldn't imagine just being on the outside looking in and saying, "Well, look at the situation. I don't want to be a part of it because I don't fit in that spot that I want." Right. Like you, you, you got to go and and show up and and hell have a hell of a camp and yeah and challenge one of these guys you know you're, you're one injury away or you're well, I, you're one good yeah. performance away of potentially you know shifting someone's perspective there too so i again i don't know enough information i, well, I don't think anyone really does you no know, there's a lot it's of, spe a lot of specu hearsay, speculation yeah. we will see you know what i mean yeah. like if he shows up in training camp all this talk is you know, it was essentially for no good reason. Right. right. Um, well, I know Baller has been in contact with his agent, but he's just saying that uh, right now he can't say too much. So we're trying to break that news. Back pocket. We're trying, he's trying to, yeah. Like he, he appreciates Baller's, you know, him and Baller are pretty tight. So um, we got to get you guys on the record. Will he be here day one at training camp? What do you got, Nass? Will he be here? I think if cooler heads prevail, they'll they'll talk him into it. Yes, I I think he should. Like you said, come in and earn it. Like show how good you are. Yeah, you know? I think you'll be here. I do too. I hope, and I hope I'm not wrong. Obviously, I yeah. always want to be right, but um, I just think that would be just such a a short and quick attempt of of yeah. playing a North American you know pro hockey game right, right. I mean it's like you're gonna show up for you know last 10 games of the season and then not come back yeah I, <laughs> you know like yeah I mean and, and again we don't really know yeah I, every, exactly. everything and so it's hard to you know everyone's speculating I think uh yeah. everything I've read and heard um so I 
I hope he comes to camp. Yeah, so, Baller, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I and I'm sure so he'll go back. And if he doesn't, Baller's be like, "Look at this, nice." Yeah, he loves doing that, but it's okay. Happens. Happens. We'll find out sooner or later. Now that's probably next month sooner, or so. We'll yeah, see if he's rolling a lot, in a lot sooner. A lot of our listeners may not know, but I am a huge baseball fan, a lot, as well as Elvis is. You and me both, Nass. And with Game Time, we can get good deals on tickets. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. My favorite feature on the Game Time app is the last-minute deals. You can save up to 60% of buying last minutes for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. You know what I like the most? I love how you can get a panoramic view of your seat from the app before you buy it. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code NASTY. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code N-A-S-T-Y for $20 off. Download Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Your boy, Marty Natchez. Oh, the Nach. Not, not no, Rick. No, not Rick. No, not, not that guy. <laughs> not that guy. Not Rick Flair. No, different Nach. A different Nach. Um, Sign a two-year deal, kind of like a bridge deal, I guess. A short deal, six and a half per year. Um, had 53 points this season. He had 70, I think, the year before. Um, he was a restricted free agent, so um, he wanted out, but they found a way to get this deal done. What, what are your thoughts on him? He's obviously he's a hell of a player. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, with, the, with at that price – I think he can get back to seventy plus points yeah. you know, with, with a big with a big year. Um, so the point production is is there. The question is is the attitude if he wants out. I mean, right. can you produce at that high that highest level if you're really not in it and your heart's not in it? So I guess that'll be determined. He was restricted, so he really right had no choice. Right? Ball, you're right, Baller. What what were all of um, what were his main concerns with? Like, was it the ice time? Yeah, I think it was just mostly ice time. He just wanted more ice time. Um, well, which every player does. Which who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, right. I I never saw you hold now. <laughs> Sitting iced. on the bench for that extra fifteen seconds. So Rig, get... <laughs> Baller Riggs used to turn around and be like, "Would you tell this fucking guy to get me out there?" Yeah. No, you didn't have to do that. After every game, I was just like, man, I wish I could have played an extra 30 seconds tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Play five and a half minutes. You were chucking. But you got to count in the minutes you spit in the box. Which was more than... More than I play. You play, <laughs> yeah. For start every doing fight, the math. yeah, you start doing the math. Baller sent me a. I was totally off subject, but he sent me a clip last night. Remember how me and Lavi used to hit each other like we score a goal. He was always fired up, and we've talked about uh, Zherdev before. He said he found a clip where Z scores like Richie made the pass. Actually, is insane. Mike Richard basically makes a no look pass with Z coming out of the box. He knew the time, and that's Mike Richards, yeah. one of the best players. But he makes this unbelievable pass. Z goes in on a breakaway, scores on Hank, and then they finally they show the bench, and I run over, and I I know why I'm doing it because Lavi is like so happy we scored, but at the same time I feel like he's like oh, I'm gonna hear it. it was, and it was actually a three game goal streak uh, that he had you know he had scored, and I I would always tell Lavi fuck most goals per ice time, gotta get him out there, <laughs> get boy. Him out there. Look at your boy he's sleeping, <laughs> you know. But um, that was an awesome clip Baller sent me last night. Um, but anyway, Natchez gets a two-year deal, six and a half. Good, good money. Obviously, you take. I mean, you well, you basically make it that now. But um, <laughs> uh, I take it. But anyway, like they they needed to keep him. They yeah, needed to keep yeah. Him. Uh, Patrick Line in Columbus. Uh, rumors are saying that the team kind of wants to move on from him. He he just uh, I believe got out of the assistant program um, from the NHL. Uh, we hope he's doing well mm-hmm. um, and is, is getting better. But um, who do you think is a good fit if Columbus is trying to, like, you know, move him? Do uh, you see a good fit anywhere um, for any – I mean, obviously, he – to me, if you get him on board, you got a coach you'll listen to. Seems to have been an issue before. 
I would say he probably won't sign in Philadelphia because yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it reunited the best of buddies, but I don't know that. I'm, I'm kidding. But um, is there anywhere that stands out to you like a, a good a good place for him? Not really. I, I think the issues that he deals with are brought on himself. I think it's the same story wherever he goes. He's obviously got a shitload of talent, the size, yeah. the shot. It Escape. just seems like he's his own worst enemy. So until he either accepts where he is on the depth chart and just kind of is okay with that, yeah, kind of just like allowing things to be as they are um, and maybe shifting his attitude a little bit, you know, I, well, I, I think if he does those things, he could probably fit on any team. Well, I, I agree. And, and, you know, you hope that him, maybe this was a problem. Yeah. Like, obviously it was a problem. Yeah, well, maybe that um, was the, and, the problem. And, and maybe, you know, him going through this tough time that he just went through and, and comes out positive and he gets his head screwed on straight mm -hmm. and wants to play and then realizes, you know, how lucky he is to be where he is. Right. Um, but he's a dangerous player. He is. I mean, he could shoot the puck, like you said. I definitely a first power play guy. Yeah, um, he's on. He's on. Yeah, if you can get him, I think Baller was saying earlier, if you can get him on a team, and even if he's a, you know, your your third, he's on the third line, still can throw in some goals. But he's definitely a power play guy. Mm -hmm. Could help a lot of teams. Yeah, and you could work him, you know, obviously up and down the lineup there right. as needed. So if other guys aren't going, you could easily slot him up. And or down if he's not playing, but you put him on the ice at the right time, you know, get him in a shooting position, you know, right. anything is well, that's the anything thing is possible with I, him. Yeah, do you you find this like I feel like when a guy like him that can score, shoot the hockey puck like that, if they start off strong, I feel like they buy in quicker. Mm -hmm. That's a shame that that's the way it is, but. If you get him somewhere, if you do move him and he he's hot right away, I think that definitely helps. Yeah, obviously, any player probably when you're hot, it's a lot more fun to oh, yeah. go to the rink and play yes, the game. It is. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens there. Again, I don't think Columbus has officially said that, but that's the rumor going around. So you're saying no reunion with Torts? I don't think that would happen. Do you? I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. I think no. you kind of have your line A with Tippett, and you get a little bit more. Yeah, and yeah. hopefully I, I he think keeps evolving. They know, want to keep the flies away. I'm not sure yeah, that's great for probably PR or media having. Yeah, I agree. Having that scenario, but and I don't know him, so yeah. I've never heard a bad word about him from an, another equipment guy. Um, but obviously, things just haven't worked well. Yeah. Um, so pretty surprising. I don't know. I should say surprising, but uh, well, maybe a little. Uh, first year player uh, Brock Faber, who was uh, obviously runner up to um, Connor Bedard and the rookie voting, uh, signed an eight-year deal. Minnesota locked him in. Billy Guerin, love Billy Guerin, man. Yeah. It was a great little uh, post I saw where they actually uh, videoed him signing a contract, and, and Billy's kind of like, you sure you want to you do it? He's like, I do. I'll sign yeah. it right now, yeah, you know. Right. But uh, eight-year deal, um, eight and a half a year. He's only played one season. Um, shocked by that? 47 points. Great year. I mean, yeah. the, the kid could play. Um, to me, I was a little surprised after only one year, but I think what they're doing with Riggs is they, they see a lot of potential on him. Sure that do. he's in a few years. I think Baller was even saying earlier, in a few years, this is going to look like a steal. That's yeah. what they're hoping, obviously. Yeah, I mean, is it seem like a little bit much up front like that, especially after one full year in the NHL? Yeah, but I... But it's hard to find D-man like that. Right. Uh, you know, shy of 50 points, first NHL season, runner-up, the rookie of the year. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're seeing something outside of the point production, what you're seeing on the ice within the locker room. There's something probably special about this guy. Right. Uh, so am I shocked? Not not really. I mean, you wouldn't just do that by accident. Yes. You know, Billy Guerin is probably a good judge of character. There's, so there's something Definitely. special about this kid. Yeah. Obviously, putting up fifty, almost fifty points as a defenseman, your first year in the NHL is it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So they see a huge ceiling with this kid, and I don't see a problem with it. No, I just no. hope that it pans out. But I mean, you can't really think like that. You just got to trust that you sign this guy that the, the development process will take care of itself, and you'll yeah. continue to improve, and you know, fall into that leadership role, and everything will work out as it should. But I mean. Those guys don't fall, you know, grow on trees, and exactly. they're they're hard to come by. So if you have one, you lock them up and yeah, that's, believe in them. That's the thing too with with social media and what we do, and what a lot of people do is 
you know, you see that deal, you're like, oh, it's way too early. Or you get people going, hey, there's a lot of, like, you got to look at it in a positive light, especially if you're with Minnesota, um, just kind of like the deal with TK. Like, mm-hmm. you got to, well, you know, if he doesn't have another trade, well, let's hope he lights it up and yeah, gets, well, you it. know, 70 to 80 points every year. Yeah. You're not going to even bat an eye at the deal. Well, so, to me, Billy Guerin, like, I know he's, he's, you know, f- fairly new at being a GM, but the guy played hockey his whole life. He had a mm-hmm. great career. He, I, I feel like he, if he's willing to put that out there, then he really obviously believes his kid's That's worth it. it. And I, you got to trust him on it if you're a Minnesota fan, a player, whatever. Um, he obviously saw a lot in this kid yeah, to give him that deal after one year. Uh, happy for him. Yeah, congratulations. Bro. And you obviously had support of his of his staff, right? Yes, you don't just go sure. sign that deal on your own, so. Uh, I mean, time will tell. Yeah, but you can't go into these deals worrying about what could go wrong. You yes, just, you you focus on what could go right and all that you know. Yeah, how you're building your team and 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 the surrounding pieces. So and, and exactly and and like I said, if this could be look like a steal in yeah. two to three years, mm-hmm. you're like you know, um, Eric Stahl, Stahl played a long he? time man, great player, big centerman. Um, Number of being retired in Carolina, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Won his cup there. Um, big number 12. Was captain there for years. Um, worked with him a few times with Bauer when I used to work with TimmyPower.com. Uh, yeah. Timmy, what's up? Um, but uh, pretty cool and deserved. Well deserved oh, yeah. to me. Um, took over for Roddy, you know, becoming the captain there. And just did a great job. and. A pro. Oh, totally. Like, pro. you know, all, all of them are. All, the whole you know, all the boys. Um, but uh, congratulations to him. I thought yeah, that was absolutely. pretty cool and well deserved. Yeah, well deserved. Yeah. I mean, it's a long time. Yeah. Playing the NHL and being that that go to guy. And like you said, absolute pro and wouldn't expect it anything less than having that number hanging in the rafters there in Carolina. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure, he'll find a management position of some sort. I would. You would think. Later. You would think. And, and the other thing is, um, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago after <clears throat> the Panthers won the cup. But uh, Paul Maurice, I thought was really cool. Threw a few names out. Oh, that yeah. were a big part of them that weren't on the team now. And Radko Gudis was one. But Eric Stahl was another guy that he's like he came in here and he helped build what we're doing yeah. and it says a lot about him and you know right. when thinking back to when he left Carolina and signed in Minnesota he ended up with 42 goals and I don't yeah. think anyone no you know he was kind of like I'm going to show everyone I can still play and mm-hmm. he played a long time like you said so congratulations well deserved yeah 100% it's a big one Wi-Fi oh Robert Jack I, your yeah. boy signed a two year deal 1.3 yeah it's big, big money good money for big him man yep um, yeah I mean there's very few of those those tough guys around. Seventh defenseman, big body, you can yep. slide in the lineup when you need them. Obviously, mobile enough to yeah. to, to get around and, and play hockey. Uh, so, where else are you going to find some toughness on the back end like that? You lock I, I, them up, and you know it's not crazy money, but you. I love seeing a guy like like him and players like him that work their bags off, but mm-hmm. also it's still part of the game whether you want to. You want it to be or not, to have a guy like him is so important in the yeah. room. It's so important in some games where, like you said, he may not play every night, but he's definitely dressing when there's oh, yeah. a, someone that could, you know, mess with your, your teammates or, or put a little fear, you know, in your mm-hmm. in your team, knowing you have him there to say, hey, no, no, we're not doing that tonight, and he steps up to the plate. Um it's worth more money, one point three million, and you know that in a locker room. Yeah. But uh, good for him, man. It's a good, good little deal, and I like seeing that. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I was happy for him. Yeah, yeah. There's just there's very few guys like that. You know, they kind of got got their chance the old fashioned way, and I guess not. It's not easy hanging around as a seventh defenseman either. There, especially right. as a guy like that. But he's obviously great in the locker room. You could probably dress seven defensemen if you need to, and that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Sneak him in some. Some rotations up front there if you need, but yeah, I think that's a good signing. Montreal will be loving that one. Yeah, I think they will too. And he's it, from what I've heard from uh, Patty Langlois, like uh, equipment manager there in Montreal, he just 
guys love him. Yeah, I'm sure. He's probably you can just watch him. It's kind of hard not to, right? Yeah. Uh, he's one of those guys. So good for him. Mm-hmm. Another tough guy. Oh yeah, make a little bit of cake. Why the hell not? God, man, you make just think. He got two. He got two point six. You make that in six months. <laughs> That's insane. I wish I would have waited one point three a year. <laughs> That'd be nice. You would, have, would you still have bought the LMO? <laughs> <laughs> Might I have bu- I might have bypassed that. it. You might have <laughs> Ball, are we going to use that Ellie Mont to take care of all our stuff when we go oh, do yeah. shows and stuff? Just move move, move all the accessories move. around. Oh, yeah. And still have room to fit oh. everyone in there, even Debo. It's functional. Is Debo on the farm today? <laughs> Debo, <laughs> let's farming. go. He's farming. Um, well, that's about it. Um, but pretty busy week for the summer. It's tough, you know, in the summer. Um, we got some good guests coming up here soon. Oh, yeah. Flyers Fantasy Camp coming up. Yes. We'll be making a little visit, too. Yep, yep. Going to do that. I have uh, the general manager, Danny Breer, is going to join us while we're there. Um, and some other people coming on here soon. This segment is brought to you by Bet365, proud partner of Nasty Knuckles. Open an account today with Bet365 and bet on a huge range of markets. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Use code HockeyCA. Nass, you got that Bet365 app open? I do every day, bro. Oh, yeah, you do. You don't even want to know where I'm going. Oh, tell me. I'm going back to the Olympics because... Why wouldn't you? Well, you love basically you have to because there's nothing else <laughs> going on. Um, no, but I'm, I'm going to women's track and field. Mm. Um, one of my favorite sports oh. to, to watch um it is it is i, I think know. you know why yeah. love their uniforms um i'm going to pole vaulting Whew. which i think is awesome to watch actually it is so interesting to me i would not be able to get up that high like you know with just the pole no because i'd probably <laughs> fall backwards instead of onto the uh mat uh but i'm going with nina kennedy oh so at a plus 110 to win outright the women's pole vaulting championship or <laughs> Olympics for the gold medal. That's what I got. <laughs> I've been following her for a while, especially on Instagram. Oh, um, strong pick. It is a strong pick. Like we I mean, that. she's, she's the fave and I'm going with the favorite in this, uh, instance. Well, what, what, what rock you, solid. Yep. I, I love it. What do you got? Well, I'm also staying in track and field. Well, I know that's one of your favorite things. It's one of my favorite things. I've been following women's discus throw for the last couple of years. You know, I knew that. I it's knew a hobby that. of mine. Yes. Do a lot I of research. Djembe. Djembe. I've been following specifically the favorite, Valerie Allman. Yes. You have, I've heard you speak of her. But I am taking Bin Fang at plus 700 to beat the favorite. It's an upset. Valerie Allman. Can you believe that? I'm shocked. I thought you were going to go with your girl Valerie, but no. I know you do watch quite a bit of that, so <laughs> it's a good, it's a good call. Yeah, it's. A, I'm going to be following. It's a that solid play. call. I think it is. So I think it looking is. Looking forward to seeing how that one plays out. Should be an upset. I know you. You've kind of had that on your radar for Plus a little seven bit. Hundo. Yeah. Good play. Here we go, Ben. Bet, bet three six five, baby. Bet three six five. All right, Nass. You know what time it is. I think I know. What time is it? It's clear time. It's oh. clear rum time clear rum questions brought to you by clear rum go to clearrum.com slash shop type in code nasty 2023 and get 35 percent off of your order pa residents only rigs gonna be lots of clear flowing this weekend for elvis b day party oh yeah it, the That's kids right. aren't gonna have any <laughs> yeah but i think the, the adults might the adults might be sipping on it might need a reload oh Use i need a reload fellas. That code nasty i know i know i know i got the code baller what do you got starting us off today we got cameron tonkin over on ig cam wants to know nasty what's your favorite piece of game used memorabilia in your collection great well question. cam great question matter of fact i Actually, have it sitting right here, Rex. Oh, How just, weird is that? <laughs> I just, um, just by I flu. think I think I would have to go with uh, my Wayne Gretzky stick. Look at that thing! Um, that is a this is a piece legit of art game used. I I got this from Gretz in um, ninety six, I believe. I think this was ninety six. The original. Uh, they all came with you know. They already had his yeah. handle on them, which is cool. His name up there. 
um, baller. I'm sure we'll get a better look at it. But um, it was great. Uh, Rick Talk, I was playing with him in uh, L.A. And they were in town playing the Flyers. And Talk says, hey, do, do you have a one of the G sticks, one of Gratz sticks? I was like, well, no. But I'm not, like, got to go up and ask him. And he goes, he's like, Gratz, he's like, can you sign up a stick for, you know, D? And he's like, yeah, sure. And then he actually asked me, do you want me to personalize it? And I didn't know. I was just like, oh, you can just sign it. I don't know if it's better if it's personalized, but, I mean, obviously this is going to Elvis anyway. I'm yeah. never going to get rid of that. Um, yeah, but that's that, a keeper. Yeah, it's cool. It's that original. Yeah. Oh, it's man, so, that is just... there some weight to it? Oh, yeah. It, it's not uh, light like the six before, but. He made it work. Did, didn't that uh, look that like the, my, like, my, <laughs> blade, my <laughs> blade coming in? Yours was straighter. <laughs> Yours could have been left or right. This <laughs> little, one is a left handed. A little twin. more composure now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You had it. Your backhand was poise. unreal. <laughs> unreal. The poise. Yes, Always exactly. Always a passing position. But uh, I think I, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of cool uh, memorabilia just from over the years. Guys giving it to me, but... I mean, it's the greatest of all time. I mean, not that Messier jersey right behind you, right, too? Dude, I love that, or the too. Crosby or the I, Richie or the Sackett. There's a ton of them. Like, but like I say, it's, nah, it's, it's the one thing I have of that thing is, uh, to special. me that I would never want to get rid of. Good um, question. Yes, thanks for the question. This one's from Greg Bond over on Instagram. He wants to know, what's been your favorite moment of the Paris Olympics so far? Well, not the open ceremony. Um, <laughs> you want to dig into that one? I don't want to no, dig into not. that. Let's stay away. Oh, um, no, uh, honestly, I th- I love seeing, like, obviously I'm pulling for U.S. I love seeing people win uh, medals and just the excitement. You know, you know what it's like to win a championship. Riggs, you've done that. Um, but the women's rugby team winning at the end, the U.S. team, they, they won the bronze. But I remember Kimo teaming and saying to me after the 2010 Olympics, he won the bronze with, uh, obviously, Team Finland. Uh, we lost at the gold medal game, and he was like, obviously, silver medal is better, but winning that last game yeah, and I could see winning – a, a medal he was like it was almost like you guys are sad yeah because you lost the gold yes you get the right, silver different and feeling, it kind of yeah. made sense so when i was i was thinking a lot about what chemo said um coming back from the olympics that year uh watching the women's team and, mm-hmm. and if, if i'm not mistaken baller you could probably find the footage but they won it right at the end i don't know if uh, you guys happen to see it but it was it was really cool and, and they end up getting the bronze medal that's been my favorite nice. so far well, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Go ahead. I haven't watched, you haven't watched a whole a lot. lot of Olympics waiting for the javelin throw August 6th. Well, obviously. And, <laughs> and the <did>. discus. <laughs> I knew that's what you were kind of waiting on. It's more your, your thing. But, been really patient. Um, yeah, I've kind of um, been watching uh, been watching bits and pieces when I can. Obviously, yeah. just running around even though we're in the summer with Elvis a lot. But yeah. I figured you weren't staying up too late watching – no. Uh, but it's on all day. Just haven't had enough time. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I didn't think you had, but you'll be tuned in here soon. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Javelin, javelin throw, discus, discus. throw. Whew. Yeah. It's coming. Any any thoughts on Joel Embiid choking like he always does? God, baller, that sounds like a typical <laughs> Philly fan. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't for uh, at least it wasn't for the Sixers right. at this point. Um, I said, that's tough when you have a team like that, but I know you've been watching. That is one thing you've watched, the basketball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real close. <laughs> but, like, Jason Tatum doesn't play a minute the other night. Like, you, like I don't – and then the poor coach, Steve Kerr, who's won as a player, as a coach, has done all this in basketball. He's having to apologize to people. Like, it's crazy when you have a team that's that good. But, uh, anyway, that's just a different subject. But, uh yeah, baller. <laughs> he he missed those free throws. He's usually a, he, he can shoot the ball, and he's a, actually for a man his size, he's a very good. He's got a very good stroke, and, and he usually makes free throws. He's but crumbled under the pressure. He didn't play yesterday. He didn't play at all in the last game. Wow. One more. This one's from Jake Van Ripper two seven over on IG. Will Philly ever get a marquee player again? And how many marquee players currently exist in the NHL? Man, that's a really good question. Yeah. When you're talking about marquee, to me, there's not one on every team. No. I right? Mean, yeah. Like, I mean, I know Sid's getting up there, but he's a marquee player. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Connor McDavid, um, Nathan McKinnon, 
Makar. Yeah. Um, that's what I think of as a as a you right, know, top right. of the line marquee player, a high level elite player. I, I think every team wants a like a top level marquee player. I think we're hoping Mitchkov turns into that um, with everything, all the tools he has. He's obviously a young kid, but um, we're going to see soon enough yeah. this year. But uh, you know, I think the last time. And I and correct me if I'm wrong. Like I really have to think right off the top of my head. I'm just thinking maybe Fopa, Peter Forsberg. Oh, Yogs. Yogs was a marquee guy, even though he was 40. But what he put up that year, baller, close to 80 points that year. Uh, maybe I'm a little off, but he had yeah, Yogs. I mean, would you consider him a marquee player? I know he came back at at 40, but maybe if you don't want to include him in that, I'm I'm thinking probably Fopa. And then you know it sucked because he had. You know, a lot of issues going on with it, with his feet. Anyway, basically. And as far um, as the draft goes, G would probably be. A, yeah, G, oh, G. I should say that, but like, are you? Can you put Claude up there with the other guys? Like a lot of people from here don't. I think he was so special yeah. as a player. I think he I finished think he, top five in heart voting three times. G. He did. Yeah, I mean that's pretty. That's, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I, I people I just never gave him enough credit because you're putting him up there against the Crosbys and the Ovechkins and but the they McDavid's. Had, they They're always like G always seemed to be like the second class, you know, to them. But I I, I would put him up there I, I, at least in that same pool. Uh, maybe those, some of those guys might be a little bit more. Yeah, and know, I and I I, I but, can't believe I I left G out of that. But what I was going to say is obviously Claude is one of my favorite players and so special of a player but to his defense and this isn't just me because we're friends with him and and he's a buddy but he never all these other guys we talk about is being up here they all have another guy that's yeah the batman right there, the robin, the batman, right? the robin and, yeah and nothing against anyone to play with g but he never had the robin he didn't yeah he really I, I agree didn't. we've always said that you know like um you know the year we went to the finals like he was a third line centerman yeah like obviously he was never going to stay a third line centerman. He had way too much in his arsenal. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I feel like G. Even though half the people won't say he is, well, where was he in the playoffs? Well, for one, we barely made the playoffs <laughs> the last few years, and that is not on Claude Giroux, right. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's hard, and I think everyone wants a marquee guy. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but I mean, it's just not that easy. But like I said. Maybe Matt Faye's going to be that guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, he's the closest thing to it, you know, the best chance of there being one in this yeah. organization. You have to draft those guys. Like you said, like, yeah, those guys that you sign later on could be quote-unquote marquee guys, but they're kind of past their prime <clears throat> marquee in a different way maybe. Yeah. But you have to draft these guys. Look at traditionally the teams that have won Stanley Cups in the last 10 years. You know, the, the Kane-Taves duo, yes. the Crosby-Malkin yes. duo. You know, you can go down in Florida last year. They've been a couple marquee guys there. Um, well, yeah, and the thing is about that, I was going to say, you made a great point. Like, usually it's through a draft, right? Yeah, you have um, to. Florida, yeah, the, what, a, what a move yeah. to bring in, obviously, Kachuk. And yeah. you got rid of a guy in Huberto. And well, it was more than just Huberto, but Uyghur as well. But you brought in a guy that's just yeah, does so much more than points. Yeah. Like we've talked about him till we're blue in the face. But that's a that's where you to me. I don't want to say Florida's lucky, but they're lucky. But they did make that move. Yeah, pulled it off. That's about the only way. Other way you're going to get a mark a marquee guy. Yeah. I, I look at Kachuk as a marquee guy. Yeah. Just but I know he's not flashy, but he puts the points up. And he does so many other things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a great yeah. question. But yeah. I, hopefully Matt Vey is going to be that. I would think. And then you build around that as as we keep going. That's what they're hoping for. I think yep. the whole city is, is hoping for that. Exactly. You know, they need that franchise player. It, so. You know, quickly, Riggs, that's a great question, by the way. Um, in saying that, reading all these uh, articles, and we can't uh, not talk about the strike he threw, was it pretty form? <laughs> But it he was threw a strike. strike. It he was threw a strike. strike. Probably never thrown a baseball before in his life. A little until shot that day. watching too many Olympics. Yeah, he heard you like the, the track and field. <laughs> um, but the pressure, I feel like, like he's going to get the pressure anyway, oh, yeah. right? But like the saviors here, the saviors here. Jesus, I just hope this guy scores game one because I feel like if he doesn't score, everybody, oh, what's, what's up with this guy? You know, like I hope we are 
patient with him. He's yeah. got to learn this game, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, you're coming from uh, bigger ice surface and all that. Oh, and yeah. he definitely has, you know, one of the things they, we've talked about with him is he does have that compete in him. And I think that, I think that goes a long way. You know, but I hate everyone's like, I think he's getting a lot of pressure oh, on yeah. him, but maybe he, we don't know him. So maybe he loves it. Yeah. And the, what I've seen so far is probably way too early to be even talking about this, but the way he's carrying himself yeah. seems a lot more mature than his age. He does. Uh, he's got, he's got a, a sense of humor. It seems like, yeah. you know, he's really kind of poised in the way he's moving around the city. Obviously, yeah. you know, he's the big dog in town right now. But so far, what I've seen, he seems to be handled it well. Obviously, once the hockey rolls around and you actually got to face the media for your performance, that's a whole other can of worms are going to be opening up. But uh, what I've seen so far, he seems like a pleasant yeah, human being, good sure. energy around him, um, and um, and having some fun with it. So yeah, yeah. But that's uh, cool. time will tell. Hopefully, uh, he can manage the pressure and, and and like you're saying, like almost like embracing it, yes. like using it to your advantage and yeah. running with it. So. Uh, he's going to get a lot of help in that locker room. Yeah, We've he talked will. about that. He's not going to be alone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'll get a lot of help. So, I'm I'm super excited. Yeah. about watching this kid play. Oh yeah, me too. It's going to be a lot, a lot of, buzz. of fun. So hopefully he is. He's the guy, an elite guy, and and turns into that marquee uh, guy again. Great question. No doubt. That's a wrap, Nas. That's it. That's it. We're done. One sixty-seven. One sixty-seven in the books. You know what I'm going to ask you. No. Can you believe it? Really can't. <laughs> Me either. Almost forgot you asked that every time. I do. <laughs> well, we appreciate you all supporting us. Be sure to check us out next week for 168. Until then, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them our way. Until then, stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.